have some idea what you guys see. I have some idea what Los Angeles sees when you look at me. And that's because I go on a rare and wonderful audition. Not a lot, but occasionally I go on an audition. And to pick three things, not at random, uh, Los Angeles thinks this is an airport cop. <laughs> huh? A PTA mom or a German massage therapist. <laughs> And here's what I think I look like. I know I don't look like this person, but inside, this is what I've always felt like, which is La Femme Nikita. That's what I've always felt like on the inside. Sexy, dangerous, that's right. Or an 11-year-old boy <laughs> who's gonna grow up to be La Femme Nikita. <laughs> And you don't know that you're La Femme Nikita. I'm the youngest of six. I have four brothers and a sister, and, and my dad essentially sort of, uh, my stepmother really raised us, but my father, you know, six kids. My father wasn't around a lot when we were kids. My father is a lot like radiation. We never saw him, but he affected all of our lives. <laughs> and so, in many ways, I love my father mostly so that you don't have to. And, uh, but I, I'll tell you this, I never, we never talked about, I never knew I was a girl. Uh, I have four brothers. We were treated as people since very small childhood. And so the first time my father even acknowledged that I was a girl, I was 15. I was in the living room doing homework, right? And my father comes in and he goes, all right, we're gonna have the talk. The bee goes from flower to flower and the flower does not go from bee to bee. Guess which one you are. And that <laughs> was the extent of the lecture series that I received on how to be a woman. It's very beautiful. Uh, my father is a very smart man in many ways. He's probably 85% of the time, my father is the smartest guy in the room. 15% of the time, he's handed you a monkey's paw. And uh, you're cursed and it's gonna be bad. But I will say this, he's also a guy, glass half full kind of guy. He's 86 years old and he, as a salesman, it used to drive him nuts when we were kids and we sold stuff for school and we never made any money. It used to literally drive him mad. The first time it happened, I was seven and I came, I was in Little League. I came home from selling candy bars for Little League. He was sitting on the couch. He's like, how did it go? How did it go? How, how many candy bars did you sell? Was everybody home? Did you write down the not homes? You can go to the not homes tomorrow. I was like, no, no, dad. I went to all the houses I'm allowed to walk to and I didn't go to any of the houses that said no soliciting because the coach said you're not supposed to go there because those people don't want you. And he freaked out. You didn't go to the, tomorrow, you go to the no soliciting. Do you know why those people got those signs up? They'll buy anything. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't even want those signs. And <laughs> when my sister and I, I was 10 and we were selling candles for church. Remember the tall crystallized ones with the pictures of Santa and Jesus shaking hands? And uh, so there's candle boxes stacked all around the house and my dad has had it. And he's like, are you two making any money on this? And we're like, no, we're selling them for church, Dad. He goes, yeah, now you're going to learn something. How much you selling them for? And we said, three fifty dollars each. He goes, you two are going to sell them for five. And that's how we learned how to skim off the top. <laughs> I was not a great criminal. I was not a great criminal. I did do a lot of reading as a child. And my father has always been, he's a smart guy. He's very, you know, the first time he was proud of me, I think I was eight. So I came home from school and I don't know why my dad was there. I don't know why he decided to do some parenting. And I'm not saying he didn't have his car keys in his hand, but I'm saying that he said to me, how old are you? What are you, eight? And I said, I am eight. And he goes, what is that, third grade? I said, it is third grade. He goes, what did you learn in third grade today? And I said, well, we are studying the end of the Mesopotamian empire. And he goes, yep, empire's end. What's that tell you? I was like, what? He goes, what's that tell you about America? And I said, that America's gonna end? And he goes, yeah, yeah, sleep tight. All right. It's weird how smart he is and how, you would think he'd be depressed, but he's the most cheerful guy in the world, I can't even tell you. Uh, not long ago, I was reading a book in front of him and he goes, what are you reading? What are you reading there? And I said, it's a science fiction novel about uh, a dystopian future. And he goes, yeah, have you looked around? We live in a dystopian present. Uh, you, know, you know what the future's gonna be like? Just like it is now. You're gonna be driving a five-year-old car, you're gonna be looking for work. Don't worry about it. And uh, 
it's I've probably had four one-on-one -on -one conversations with my dad in my entire life. Um, I'm pretty lucky. I'm a pretty cheerful person. I'm not a particularly depressed person. This is very much a golden retriever of humanity. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I don't get depressed. I am alive. I am human. I, too, sometimes want to kill myself. Now, whenever you say that, you got to tell people not to do it. Don't do it. Here's what I tell myself whenever I get super depressed and want to kill myself. Here's my pep talk. Don't do it, Jackie. Tomorrow's not going to be better, maybe, but it'll be different. Don't do it. FOMO. FOMO. That's what stops me. Fear of missing out. Now, but I will say this. In my early 30s, I was super depressed, and I said to my dad that I was super depressed, and he goes, yeah, sometimes in your 20s and 30s, you want to kill yourself. And I was like, how is this helpful? And he goes, well, hear me out. Hear me out. Here's the good news. In your 20s and 30s, sometimes you want to kill yourself. In your 40s and 50s, you don't want to kill yourself anymore. Sometimes you just want to die. Now, <laughs> Here's the good news. If you can make it to 60, you're home free. You're 60, you're like, oh my God, I, if I, could, I just need like 15 more years. If you're 70, you're like, I need like seven or eight more years. My dad is 86 years old. More than once in the last five years, he has said to me, I would never buy a green banana, but when I do, and I get to eat that banana ripe, it's a good day. Now, I will say this. My dad lives in what he calls an old people apartment building, and he is, uh, he calls it God's waiting room. He's like, any day of the week, you can get a free DVD player in this building. He said, I went to somebody's 100-year-old birthday party the other day, you know, and I realized this, you know who wants to be 100? 99 years old, that's when you want to be 100. He is not wrong. Uh, he is, I love my father dearly, and uh, for some reason, I want to tell you this joke and then go away, uh, is the fact that, uh, is I am married to a man. That's always a fun reveal, but here's the, here's the weird thing. <laughs> no, there's just, the theme was manhood. <laughs> so I, I was like, okay, so my husband's a game designer. He's great, I love him dearly. And uh, he makes video games for a living. I never dated, I only did stand-up comedy for a thousand years. And in stand-up comedy, when I started doing stand-up comedy, it was all dudes and they would all be like, we're gonna go get drunk and try to get laid. And I was like, Oh, I could probably do that. And, uh, and so I would sleep with strangers. Now, I don't know if you've slept with a lot of strangers, but if you have sex with strangers, and that's what I was doing, you got to know that there's always an awkward moment when you have sex with a stranger where you can't help but think to yourself, is this where he kills me, right? <laughs> Super awkward and almost impossible to have an orgasm when you are poised for flight. <laughs> Super tense. Now... <laughs> But eventually, I was like, I would like a boyfriend. I would like to be in a relationship. I want, this is how I want to die. I want to die being fingered to death by someone I love. <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful vision. So, uh, but he is, uh, uh, he's a game designer. Everything's a game. Everything has a game, a dynamic, a game dynamic. So, uh, like, I get text messages from him because he's a game designer from the grocery store. I got one and it said, hey, the user interface is here is broken. I don't know how long I'm gonna be. And I'm like, so I texted him back. I was like, what is the user interface at the grocery store? And he goes, it's the line. It should be one line, like at the bank, but it's many lines and I don't know if I've chosen correctly, so I don't know how long I'll be. <laughs> and, and I was like, well, see you when I see you. Anyway, so, but my favorite one was not long ago, he went to a bachelor party of a friend of his, and he was, and I, he had never, it was, he's, he calls me up, he's like, we're going to a strip club, I'm gonna go look at boobs. And I was like, well, come home to mine, have a good time. <laughs> And he had never been to a strip club before. I've been hanging out with dirt bags for 40 years. I have been to many strip clubs. And uh, so I get a, uh, a call from him an hour later and he's like, hey, what game is this? And I was like, it's not a game, it's a strip club. It's just noodly ladies being noodly. And he's like, oh, there's a game here. There's a lot of in-game purchasing going on. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, well, you're an adult man. Delete the app, get the fuck out. Uh, but because he's a game designer and he thinks about game design all the time, and because I'm a comic and I think about comedy all the time, uh, I asked him not long ago, eight, nine months ago, I said to him, when we are making the sweet, sweet love, do you ever think about game design? And he said, no, and I don't believe him because I sometimes think about comedy. Now, <laughs> not every time, not even a lot. I like, I just, I, I like sex. It's just sometimes during sex, I would also like to get a laugh <laughs> trying to have a good time here. Anyway, so 
three times since this happened, not every time, wouldn't be funny every time, but three times since it happened, we'll be doing it, we'll be doing it, we'll be doing it, like you do. And he will start to come. And as he starts to come, I will say to him, ooh, wait, don't come yet. <laughs> he can't stop, he can't stop coming. He can start laughing. And so he laughs and he comes and he comes and he laughs. <laughs> It's really the happiest of all endings. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. Enjoy the rest of the show.